This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. The sides of town, they would both randomly break into the same song. Okay, that last detail was a lie, but the rest is completely true. They met at an April Fool's Day party. My dad saw my mom from across the room and knew she was the one. He was 16, she was 15. That's right, a decade and a half out of the womb and he knew that she was the one. He asked her out again and again and she repeatedly said no. In her defense, he had a girlfriend at the time. When recounting the story, my dad jokingly complains, "She made me break up with my girlfriend." He apparently didn't want to. After he did, he and my mom started going out. And that was it. They married, had my eldest sister Tracy, my middle sister Colleen, and me, Laura. They settled in a home 30 minutes from the houses they grew up in. Even though they upheld the local tradition of staying in the Chicago land area, my parents were a bit of an anomaly in our pristine town. As just one example, in a suburb that embodied practicality, my dad bought my mother a Sebring convertible. This was in a city that has good weather for like 2 weeks out of the year. Winters in Illinois are brutal and last forever, and my dad bought my mother a car whose main feature was a top that came off and exposed us all to the rain, sleet, and snow. Soon enough, the fabric roof got a hole in it, and now they keep a bucket in the back seat for when it rains. Yes, 20 years later they still have the car. But my parents really wanted to enjoy those 2 weeks of nice weather per year. I love that about them. Downers Grove is a mostly Catholic town with strong family values. Not so much religious as culturally Catholic. By far, my family had the most uh passionate opinions about religion. One of my dad's favorite dinnertime musings was, "Fuck organized religion. It's bullshit. I need another hot dog, Lori. You're too skinny." My family were the only atheists in town. My dad was bent on making sure we knew that church was brainwashing. No matter what ideals they grew up with, no matter who they were speaking to, my parents were incredibly open-minded. They were authentic. They never pressured me to get married, and they made it very clear that they would love me if I was gay. Even though we were constantly struggling financially, they made sure I never felt pressured to get a stable 9 to 5 job if I didn't want one. I would not trade those two for the world. Well, maybe the world, but nothing less. While all the other parents in town were encouraging their kids to pursue practical careers, my mom and dad didn't blink twice when I told them at age 11 that I was going to be a famous actress. You can do it, sweetheart. We believe in you. My dad would take the liberal parenting a bit further when he would also say things like, "When you try acid, Make sure you're in a comfortable setting. I'm not going to try acid, Dad. Oh, come on, Lori, you got to try acid. I never did try acid. I guess it was my way of rebelling. In grammar school, a few other kids asked me, "When did you make your holy communion?" I had never heard of a holy communion. I asked them what it was. Then they frowned at me and said, "You're going to hell." Nine-year-olds say the darndest things. That day, I went home and asked my mother, "Why are you going to hell?" She was a bit alarmed. I even insisted she teach me a prayer so that I would fit in with the other kids. But even when I tried, I just didn't fit in with them. The small rejections made it hard for me to talk in school. I lacked any confidence once I stepped inside the classroom. Today I really appreciate this aspect of how I was raised. In a town where everyone passively accepted religion as one of the defining factors of our community, my parents never forced religion on me. My dad would say, "When you're old enough to research different religions and make that decision for yourself, I want you to be able to do that." And I did. I've been able to go my own way and find a spirituality that I fully believe in and speaks to me. Hail Satan. Just kidding.
And there might have been one other reason why it didn't fit in well. I had a really morbid sense of humor. And no one wants to talk to the skinny, quiet...